All right, it is December 27th, day 25. It's about 40 degrees outside. It was a really cold, windy day today with just a touch of rain. Uh, my last video was day 22. I skipped videos on day 23 and 24. Day 23, just it, it's, it's, it's all been the same thing. I've just been doing a lot of prefab work, making up 90s, watching, or making up a 30 inch EMT, half inch EMT nipples, putting on, uh, putting on couplings, taping them, it, it, watching block. That's all that we've done for the last two days. But today was, was definitely different. So today, day 20, 20, uh, day 25, it's 20, the 27th, uh, two days after Christmas, uh, had a really good Christmas break, ended up taking five days off as opposed to four. So I had Saturday, Sunday, Monday, which was Christmas Eve off and Tuesday, which was Christmas day. I was supposed to work Wednesday, but it was raining really hard and we didn't have anything inside to do. And, uh, what we were going to be doing that day was watching the block workers work, but I couldn't do that because my glare is really bothering me on my glasses. I, I don't really know where to look to not get glare. Because it's like, as soon as I look, I guess it's because I, I'm i looking at my at my windshield. Basically, anywhere I look except for that, there's no glare. Anyways, we were going to be working, just, just watching the blockheads work. But they don't work if it's raining because it messes with their mud. So, day 27 was a pretty good day. Day, day 25 on the 27th. It was a pretty good day today. I made up three quarter inch EMT nipples and that consisted of me cutting 10 foot pieces into 40 foot sections. I cut five of them into 15 sections and found 15 extra sections, or found four extra sections. So I cut 19 sections. I cut the first probably 10 with a sawzall uh, and then I cut the next, um, probably the next nine with a... Uh, with a bandsaw. We couldn't find the bandsaw this morning. My boss was pretty upset about it because uh, he figured someone had to have come and borrowed it, but he called Jose, which Jose's off for the whole week all the way up until the first of the year, so it's just me solo. I called Jose. Jose told him where it was. He found it. So, But the sawzall worked just fine. I don't really know why we had to use the bandsaw. I cut it with the bandsaw. I would use my files, which I got my files from my brother. He, When he moved, I was able to kind of raid his tool shed because he moved to another state, so he left a lot of stuff behind. And the group of files that I had, they're just, I think they're called Hyper Tough. It's just a Walmart brand of files. He couldn't have paid more than $10 for them. So it was cool to have those. I didn't have to borrow a file from my boss. Made me look pretty responsible that I had a file because that's not something that an apprentice would really just carry around on them. Um... I would, so I would cut ream with a file inside, outside, and I, I, I took, I didn't take a lot of time, but on every one I, so if, if this is the tube, I reamed the outside of the tube like this, and so, uh, but then I realized, oh, I'm just going to thread these because they're rigid, so I don't know why I did that, but I definitely did. Uh, I, I So I cut them all. Not all of them were square, but all of them were square enough. They were pretty dang close. The four extras that I found were not square, and I had to kind of just cut little bitty slim rings off of them. So... Uh, so that, that was, that was basically what I spent the first half of my day doing. The second half of the day I was threading. Now, our, th we have an automatic threader, a, a rigid, I don't know if it's a power threader, I don't really know what to call it. But essentially all that it does is it spins, um, is it spins, spins conduit, and then you take a big die, essentially, which has four blades on it, and you stick it on there, and the die grabs a hold and it cuts, cuts, or it threads the conduit. So the whole time I was just threading for the remainder of the day. Now our our die was having trouble at first because we couldn't get it locked. We couldn't get the we couldn't get the dies locked into place. Uh, the actual teeth locked into place. They were sliding around, and my boss tried and tried and fought with it and fought with it and fought for it with it for like an hour before he gave up and just went to lunch. So my boss goes to lunch, comes back, and. He says, he says, all right, go go see if you can figure that out. And I probably worked at it for three or four minutes, and I had it figured out. I, he was trying to do all four at once when he needed to do. So there's there's four. It's it's a cross. And so what I did was, it's a two inch. It's probably about two three inches of metal with teeth on one end, and there's a gap at the bottom of one of the sides, which helps you know which direction to place it in. But it also lets it's it's a guide for where the for for where it grabs, and it's got a lever. It's hard to describe without actually showing it, but it's got a lever, 
And when the lever, whenever you close the lever, it pushes the teeth in a little bit and that locks it into place. And so you open up the lever and it pulls the teeth out. Anyways, that opening and closing motion is controlled by pieces of metal that, that are on the inside. It's like a metal ring, uh, probably a four piece ring. Anyway, so it's controlled by this metal ring. And so you have to slot your teeth onto that metal ring. And so I, I did it one at a time. The first one, closed the lever, made sure it would slot, leave that one alone. The second one, closed the lever, made sure it would slot. Third, fourth, tightened everything up. It Within the first couple of reams, I started noticing that it got harder and harder to put on a coupling. Every time I would ream something, I would take a coupling and I would tighten it on there, but it was getting harder and harder, and I noticed those things were slipping, and so I had to take the whole thing off. And I took probably 30 or 35 minutes just doing research, pulling up the manual, looking up other people's posts to see if anyone had any similar issues which I'm sure other people did but I I didn't see any that were that were exactly like that so what I ended up doing was I just took um, I just took the whole thing apart put it back together and just made sure I understood how all of the pieces worked simultaneously and just kept tightening them up essentially through the rest of the day I, I loosened and tightened them up probably three more times throughout the course of the day and basically on those on those threads the first couple threads would be clean and then the next four or five would get progressively wider and wider and wider so you couldn't get a coupling on there and so I clean cleaned up I had to go back there and clean up a lot of those after I was done with all that basically we just kind of took a drive around and we we looked at the other sites and looked at the progress that they had made they put up a bunch of scaffolding the blockheads did they filled in a bunch of uh, I, I guess they call it grout. I'm not sure if that's what they call it or not. I heard them talking about grout, but it's basically mud. We're doing a FEMA room, which is storm shelter rated. And so every single block has rebar in it and every single block will be filled up with concrete. And so it just makes it a really strong, basically pure concrete room. So uh, I think that's really it for the day. There was no tool of the day on either Thursday or Friday, uh, just because... All I used was channel locks. Actually, I don't even think I used channel locks. I used uh, I used my reamer bit, which had already been tooled today, the previous two days. And I used a screwdriver. So shout out to my 11 and 1 for Thursday and Friday, I guess. Uh, tool of the day today is this headlamp. And it's got a brand on it, Crazy Fire. It's not a brand that I've ever heard of. I actually got this as a gift from my stepson. I got it a couple weeks early for Christmas. And as you can see, it is very big. It has both a front front piece and a back piece to it. Uh, but that just basically means that it's powerful. So today, while I was working on those teeth, I had my small pen light, which is actually out of battery. No, I'm glad I thought about that because I'm going to have to stop and get batteries on the way home. I had my small pen light, and it just wasn't performing. I, I didn't cut out both hands. I didn't want to put it in my mouth because it's oily. Uh, so I put the sucker on, and it is... Uh, there's no way for me to show you how bright it is. But it is bright, bright, bright. And it has a high setting, and it has a low setting, and it has a flash setting. I actually hate the flash setting on these, like the uh, tactical setting. I'm not sure what, what it's called, but I don't like that on these flashlights. Every flashlight has them now, and I'm not going to be in a situation where I'm getting mugged wearing this. So I don't know why I need... I don't know why I need... A fl uh, this flashing flashlight on here, this strobe light. But uh, today, Taco Bell for lunch, my boss went and had lunch with his wife, so I was solo today. Uh, went and had Taco Bell, just a five dollar box, and I think that's it. Really, for the for the day, it was a really simple day. It was cold. Uh, I was really thankful for my long johns today because the wind was biting, and I'm sure it would have made it a whole lot worse to just have a shirt and a hoodie, which I have a coat in the back which I would have which I should have put on but I, I definitely forgot that <laughs> but I think that's it for the day really I don't have any other uh, I don't really have anything else I've got tomorrow we're gonna do 19 more uh, 19 more rigid nipples and then we are going to do we're gonna put we're gonna bend all of those we're gonna bend 38 nipples into 90s so we're gonna figure all that out uh, tomorrow uh, I guess that's it. Have a good day. We'll uh, we'll be back tomorrow.